All right, uh, people request to see uh, if I could do it, some kind of a demo on glazing. So uh, these are the uh, pieces that I'm planning to fire in my electric kiln, uh, maybe in a couple of days. And uh, I'm going to uh, glaze um, all of them, but uh, I will show a demonstration on some of the pieces that uh, uh, shooting a video on how I put the glaze on the pieces. So uh, just give you a preview of what am I going to do uh, during the glazing process. Okay, uh, before you glaze, there are something that you want to prepare for your bit square. Um, if your piece has been sitting on the shelf for a long time, you might have a dust on the surface. Or if you are rushed and you didn't do a good job on uh, smoothing the corners, you might have some uh, spot that is very scratchy. Uh, or uh, if you have a signature, you put it on the bottom of your pot. And, uh, that might be a little bit rough, so you want to take care of that, okay? Uh, by doing so, um, if you feel the surface is a little bit rough, and if you run your finger through it, and you feel that it's a little bit too rough, uh, what you need to do is maybe get a sandpaper and just sand it down a little bit, okay? And uh, if you don't do that, maybe go outside and so that the whole wear mask, so that the, uh, the dust doesn't uh, deposit on, you know, inside. Or you don't breathe the dust okay so that's very important so use the same paper to send the rough surface okay that's the first step the uh, second step is that um, if you are using the same paper or you, I, to I told you that your piece is sitting on the shelf for a long time uh, you want to dust it off and what how do you dust it off uh, actually it's very simple just get a uh, sponge and uh, Dip it in the water and squeeze out the water, the most water you could. Okay, dip it in the water and then um, just run it real quick on the surface. Okay, you don't want to uh, put it too much of the water inside your, your uh, bisqueware because if you are doing that, your bisqueware is not going to absorb the water. It's not getting the porous, so uh, it may be not taking enough grease. So, you just want to do a tiny little bit and squeeze out the most water. So that's how you dust it off your pieces. Okay, that's the uh, first uh, two steps. And then um, if you have a, a, a cover jar or or maybe uh, you want to just put a, a something, put a wax resist on the foot so when you are dipping in glaze, the uh, glaze doesn't stick on the, on the bottom, then you need to uh, wax it. Okay. And there are two different kind of uh, wax I usually do. Um, I put it in the uh, container here. Uh, one is for uh, footing. Okay, you put it on the foot of uh, your pot, or you want to put it if you want to fire your cover jar together. Okay, and normally I do that because uh, if you fire it separately, my lid and the body is very tight. So usually, uh, if I fire it separately, they my warp and they don't uh, fit very very well, so I usually fire my lid with the body together, okay? So in that case, if you're gonna fire together and you want to prevent the, uh, the lid from sticking on the pot, then you need to uh, put the uh, a wax resist with aluminum hydrate, okay? Um, what is aluminum hydrate? Okay, this is the aluminum hydrate here. It's like a powder, it's like a flour powder, but it's a uh, it's almond hydrate. It's a very refractory powder and all you need to do is get wax in there and then uh, put some inside. Uh, it doesn't matter how much amount uh, as long as uh, you, you feel com comfortable with it. And what it do is that after fire the uh, wax burn off and the uh, residual aluminum hydrate deposit on the foot or maybe in between of your lid and body. And that kind of create a, a, a cushion so it helps your pieces shrink more evenly uh, on the foot 
and uh, it help you uh, your lip to uh, not stick on the body. Okay, so it's easy for your lip to separate. So that's the uh, pen uh, idea of uh, putting the almond hydrate inside the wax resist. How about the uh, regular wax resist? It's when you want to do some kind of decoration that you want to reveal, uh, you want to uh, resist the uh, background color to the uh, second glaze or maybe show your clay body and you don't want the uh, aluminum wax deposit on the surface because if you have that uh, on the surface the uh, I told you the uh, aluminum hydrate is the very refractory it's not going to melt so if you put the uh, wax resist with aluminum hydrate uh, it's going to deposit on top of glaze and your glaze will be rough because that uh, powder is on the surface so it's like feel like a sandpaper. So make sure you uh, don't uh, mix up with two different kind of wax. Okay, now uh, I will show you uh, how to uh, put the, the wax resist on your pot easily. Okay, easily. Uh, it will be uh, less effort by, uh, you know, try to uh, put the, the glue, the wax on the surface. It's putting your pot on the wheel and then you wax it right on the wheel. Okay, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to show you uh, the easy way to wax your pieces, especially you throw your pieces on the wheel, it's all circle, so uh, it's very easy to do that uh, right on the wheel. And uh, here I have a plastic uh, mat on the surface. I already draw a circle on here. Um, you, don't, you don't need to have a circle if you know how to uh, tap center. Okay, let me show you how the uh, tap center is working. So put your piece on the wheel head and then you just tap it. And uh, if, if you have a skill, you, you, you do it just right away, okay? And if you don't have that, that's okay too. Uh, just get something that you can put it on, fit it on the uh, wheel head, and then use a marker and draw a lot of uh, circles, uh, tiny circles around, and then um, just use that circle as a guide on your foot and you get your sander easily too, okay? And let me show you, uh, if you have the uh, the pad that you are not going to use, maybe uh, it's even easier. You just designate the, the pad for your glazing uh, purpose, right? Like this one here. Put your pin on and then put your pad on. So this pad is going to be your glazing pad uh, for waxing, okay? Okay, so you put a lot of a uh, small circle and all you need to do is just find the circle that is closer to the one you just put it on. And it's almost center. Now you could adjust it and by spin around and then see which spot is a little bit off and you can just move around it. Okay, so that's another way to uh, to get your piece in the center easier. Okay. But again, uh, if you learn the skill of uh, tap centering, it's even easier just by tapping it. Okay. So put your piece on the wheel, wheel real quick. And then first I will uh, wax my lid. Center and then apply the wax. Uh, you want to find uh, some kind of uh, a fine brush so that you will be able to do the detail. Uh, there's a, a person, uh, she sent me uh, the sample of her brushes. Uh, you can buy it uh, from their website. I will have a link on my. Um, uh, below my uh, description, and, uh, uh, you can get it at uh, different um, sizes and different uh, method of uh, brushes. And, uh, they are uh, handmade and uh, I think it's very beautiful. So uh, you can try it and uh, just tell, tell her that uh, uh, she didn't send you and you might get a discount from there. Okay, right. So let me get one of it to try it out.
Again, this is the aluminum wax, the wax with aluminum hydrate. Yeah, that's it for the lid. Put the lid aside. Let it dry. And then apply on my rim. Uh, you need to br brush the uh, wax over where it contacts the lid with the body. So maybe inside and maybe on the top. I know this brush will be very good for if you do the uh, decoration, um, you know, painting something. I don't personally do a lot of painting, but uh, if you do a lot of uh, detail painting, I think this brush is very good for doing that. But for doing um, the uh, waxing, it's also very good too. You can get a very detailed. So that's the uh, waxing for my cover jar. So that's the uh, wax resist with aluminum hydrate. You just add a powder to it. Okay. I have no idea how much amount. I just just guess. Okay. Just guess. And um, it's it's not going to be uh, that critical. You know, how much amount of the wax with how much amount of aluminum hydrate. Uh, find a good brush okay again this um, brush is feel really good to uh, apply for the detail okay the smaller tip uh, do a very good job on that and, um, I will have a link for the uh, brush uh, it's a Lebenzone uh, pen brush okay like that I will have a link so uh, if you want to get some okay uh, this I have made and uh, looks like a very good quality and uh, she sent me uh, six of them I think yeah six of them different style and a different uh, length so if you do a lot of brush work uh, worth uh, to check it out just tell her uh, her name is Tracy and uh, tell her that uh, I send you there so okay so I already uh, brushed the uh, Wax resist with almond hydrate. So uh, after uh, quite some time of uh, drying, uh, it's ready to apply the glaze on. And uh, usually I apply the glaze on uh, inside first. And we can do that on the lid. Um, right. So the uh, since my clay body is uh, porcelain, so it will be white. Okay, just uh, just a little bit white. So what I did is using this uh, bubble uh, squeezer, squeezer to uh, absorb enough glaze, and then uh, just cover on the uh, inside. Okay. Just squeeze enough so that uh, you don't need to pour it out. So that's the uh, inside of the lid. Fill it all the way to the rim. And then just pull it out. And since I have uh, a very uh, nice wax coat, so you see that the uh, wax resists on the rim and uh, I don't have any drip of uh, glaze left over there. Okay, so that's the uh, glaze in the inside. And then um, for the lid, I usually like to have the uh, under glazes on my texture here. So I'll brush the under glazes first. Um, if for the underglazes, I choose to use uh, 
uh, the uh, Duncan's okay, the concepts. Uh, two colors, one is uh, CN074, it's kind of a uh, uh, reddish color, and one is CN052. Um, they, uh, I kind of uh, mix them together, blend together, so that it's not so red or not so orange. It's kind of between uh, red and orange. Just the container and put them together about half and half. Okay. Um, the, this is important that the, you don't want to have too much of the uh, under glazes. So usually come out of a bottle, it's kind of thick. So you want to add water to dilute it. So you want the, the uh, stage like the uh, uh, water color because if your uh, under glaze is too thick, then um, you are ruining the uh, texture. You want the, uh, the uh, uh, under glaze more uh, like watery, so more, uh, more under glaze goes into the, uh, the deeper texture. And while the, uh, the higher point, you, you will use the uh, brush to to kind of wipe it so it reveals the uh, contrast of uh, thicker underglaze and the thinner underglaze. All right. So you can see that it's kind of watery. See that when I shake it, it's watery from the top camera. And now I'll center. Again, if you have a circle, I just show you. I, just check the circle. But I know how to uh, tap center, so I'm just uh, going to tap center. And for brushing the under glazes, I like to use a thicker brush. So this is the brush I usually do. Uh, to brush the under glazes or stands. And if you are uh, for the uh, very border, you can have the finer brush to brush. So you will have a more detailed covering. Right, so that's what I mean that if you have the under glazes that is a bit diluted thinner, so on the higher point, when you brush over, the uh, uh, thicker uh, under glaze go into the deeper spot, but while the uh, the top portion, the brush is kind of wipe it, so you reveal the texture that the th the thicker in the deeper and the thinner on the higher higher point. So to uh, protect the uh, glaze from uh, affect my uh, texture, my under glaze texture, I'm going to uh, brush the uh, wax resist over the texture. And uh, like I told you that the uh, wax resist should be the uh, plain wax resist without any lemon hydrate.
Okay, so brush the uh, wax resist over to protect the glaze from interference with the uh, under glaze texture. And wait till they dry a little bit before I uh, put another glaze over. Now I'm going to uh, put the glaze here. Um, I told you that I will put multiple colors. Uh, I will have the uh, under glazes here, kind of uh, uh, orange red, and then this will be uh, kind of yellowish, kind of a brownish color on the knob, and the blue here. I'm gonna put the blue color here, and also the blue color on the chattering. Okay, that will be the chattering, and also here, but the same. Same thing, just same color on the knob, so on the shoulder here. Okay, so that's my planning. Okay, and now uh, I have uh, two different uh, size of the uh, squeezy pop bottle. Uh, one is a uh, larger tip, and this one is um, removable. Okay, you can change to the different uh, tips. This is a smaller one. And uh, I usually use that to uh, apply the glaze on. But I just put it on the wheel and then spin the wheel to cover it. Right, so wait till the wax completely dry and then I'm going to dip it in the uh, blue glaze. Okay, so the blue here, blue here, and the blue here. Uh, yellow is here. All right, so blue here. Again, I'm using the uh, uh, squeezy bottle to do that. So just enough for the yellow color. So the uh, wax resist resisting uh, nicely. So just a few trip of uh, uh, glaze on top of it. And you can use a sponge to remove it easily. Uh, the uh, the side of uh, the lid is touching the, the side of a uh, plastic bag, so that's why there's a little bit of uh, grease uh, going over there. So I will just wipe it and then uh, re grease it just a little bit. It's not a big deal. And for the bottom, again, uh, using the squeezy bottle, you can just pull it enough and then just move around. And you don't need to pull out the uh, glaze. Right, so this is the uh, blue color. I'm going to take the whole thing. So you see the uh, wax is resisting that uh, the blue color and before the uh, glaze dry it easily remove all the, the residual glaze 
from the surface. Okay, so that's the uh, cover jar glazing demo on top of the uh, on the glazes and um, two different colors brown color here blue color here brown color blue color and um, this blue color shows the uh, the chattering I have chattering texture here shows the uh, chattering nicely so that's why I choose this glaze and there's a little bit of a, a trip here I will weigh the a tiny little bit here I will weigh the, the uh, glaze completely dry and use a knife a very sharp knife and just kind of scrape it okay scrape it so that the surface will be smoother and once the uh, glaze melt actually it's it's gonna uh, smooth out so I don't usually worry that much but if you feel worried there's some uh, trip, trip mark um, you can just the glaze is made out of powder so you just use a very sharp knife and just very carefully remove that, that trip mark it's no big deal. Okay, so that's the uh, coverage demonstration.